Today, I'm going to show you how to make a custom animated widget for your live streams just like this. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm going to create my widget image in Pixlr because it's free. The link will be in the description. The first thing I want to do is select the size of the box that I want. In this case, 600 by 800. So there's already one here. I'm just going to select that. I'm going to put the name in that I want. I think I'll call it widget image. Then I'll click the create button. So our canvas is already set to the right size. Now I only need to import my image. To do that, I just find it and drag it on top, and then I'm gonna click Add Current, and this is the image I'm gonna use. Now I have to resize it so it fits in my box, and obviously we don't wanna be pointing to a microphone here, so I'm gonna resize this, and the next thing I'm gonna do is create a box that I'm going to be pointing to. So I have to go and find my color palette. I wanna make sure that I'm using color palettes that I'm already using in my background, and I import my color palette here. I'm gonna set my two colors, the front color and the back color, so they align with my color palette and how I want it to be. Then I'm gonna choose this rounded edge box here and I'm gonna drag and drop it. And eh, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm gonna adjust the size of my corners Then I'm gonna drag it again. And I think that looks pretty good, but I do not want my finger behind the box. So I'm gonna use the cutout tool and I'm gonna cut out the finger here so that it's in front of the box. And then I will re-add back in the box all around it. So it looks like it belongs in the actual picture. And that looks pretty good. I like that. The last thing I need to do is save this out. So I'm going to save it out as a PNG, which saves the transparency because I want to obviously be able to see through the background. I'm going to name my transparency image, make sure PNG is selected, and click download. And this will download to the default location for your computer. So hopefully you know where that is. Next, I wanna add some animation to this image. And to do that, you can use any video software. I'm going to show you how to use Premiere, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever image software you use is perfectly fine. I'm going to create a project, add my image into the project. Then I'm gonna drag it to the timeline. I'm going to just check to make sure that my settings for my project are correct, and they seem to be. So the next thing I want to do is I want to extend this image out to about six seconds. That's about how much I want. Now what I'm going to do is add some keyframes in here. So I'm going to click the little clock next to position, and I'm going to move it up off the screen. I'm going to move that keyframe all the way out to the very beginning. Then I'm going to add a second keyframe and I'm going to move it to a little below where I want it to end up in the final. Then I'm going to move my timeline out a little bit. I'm going to move it up a touch so it's a little higher. Then I'm going to move it down a touch so it's a little lower. Then I'm going to move it into the final position. And then what I want to do is I want to easy ease all these keyframes. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to interpolation and I'm going to select ease out. And this will kind of make it so that it rushes in really quick, but then uh, slows down near the end. And that's, I think, a pretty good look. Now I'm going to go near the end of my composition. I'm going to add a keyframe there. Then I'm going to go to the absolute end of my composition and I'm going to move my image out of the screen. And once I test this and make sure that I have the kind of movement that I want, it kind of bounces in and then rushes out, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So the only thing that's left is to export this. And I wanna make sure when I export this that I preserve the alpha of the image. So in Premiere, here's how you're gonna do that. I'm gonna go up to File, click Export. Then in Format, I'm going to select QuickTime. Then I wanna go down here into video and I wanna select animation. Then I scroll down a little bit and I make sure that 8-bit and alpha is checked. Then I click export. And now I have the file saved out as an alpha. As long as you know where you saved it, now you're ready to go. Now I need to make that video file into an animated GIF. There are many ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop. All you have to do is open Photoshop. You drag that video clip into Photoshop. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File and Export, and then I'm going to go to Save for Web Legacy. And the only thing that you need to do if you wanna make sure that your alpha is saved so that you can see through the background of the picture is go over here to Matt and make sure that None is selected. 
If you want this to loop, you can click forever down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. We're only going to play it once anyways, and it's going to disappear off the screen before it loops. If you want to set this up differently, you can. Once you have those settings correct and you make sure your size is all right, you just click save. You pick the location where you want to save your final animated GIF, and then you just go ahead and click save once again. Now we have our animated GIF and we're ready to create our widget. For this process, we're going to use Streamlabs OBS to create our widget. Why? Well, because they pretty much already have everything set up, so they just make it easier for us. In this case, I haven't set up a members widget yet, so we're gonna do that. When you're going to create a custom widget, you wanna make sure that the center box text is selected. You're just adding text. Everything else is already done. So that's what we need to have selected here. Then I'm going to scroll down and you can see that there's already an image here. It's this little zombie one. I'm going to click change media. And then here I can just drag and drop that animated GIF that I wanna change it to. Yeah, I do have a couple in here already. Then I make sure that one is selected and I click save. Now I'm gonna go and I'm going to add an alert text delay of one second, and I'm going to change the alert duration to five seconds. This basically means that the text isn't gonna show up on my little box until one second after the animation runs, so that the text will show up when the animation is finished, and then it means the text will actually go away before the animation is complete so it can zip off the page, or pretty close. They don't do half seconds, so you kinda of have to eyeball it here. The next thing we have to do is add audio to our widget, and this is pretty simple. I'm gonna click Sound, Change Media, and I'm gonna drag a bunch of audio clips in here because maybe I wanna use more than one. You can use any MP3 you want. I created these and made them into MP3s, and I'm just dragging them in here, and it's that simple. Then you can click on them to hear them, and when you have the one you want, you just make sure that one's selected, then you click Select. Now that's going to be the audio that plays every time your widget plays. That's pretty simple. I'm gonna adjust my font size down a little bit. You're going to have to mess around with these because it's going to be different for everyone. But let me just show you what you have to do to get your text to show up where you want it to show up. You're going to enable custom HTML CSS. Then you're going to change it so that you're editing the CSS. And then right down here where it says alert text, this is where you're going to put your changes in. Then the first thing I do is put position, colon, absolute, semicolon. Next, I'm going to set my height and my width at 50%, which means that we're only really dealing with the size of 50% of the box, generally. You might set this differently. You're going to have to play around with these settings to see what works best for you. Next, I want to select different padding on the sides so that I can position my text right in my box. So we're going to start with padding left of 300 pixels, and we're going to go with padding right of 20 pixels. Then I'm going to save this out, and I'm going to go into Streamlabs, and I'm going to just test it. I'm going to click this little membership button, and we're going to see how the text is displayed. Now that I get a better idea of how the text is displaying, I can go back in here and adjust it a little bit more. So I'm going to add some padding to the top and I'm going to have it 100. Then I'll just flip back into Streamlabs, click the Test Widgets Membership button, and I can see it didn't really change it much. So we're gonna have to get a little more aggressive here. And really what I do is I adjust these left and right and all that stuff until I get the text to read out exactly the way that I want it to read out. And sometimes you'll make a change and it won't even show up. But after each change you make, you have to make sure you go down and save your settings before you test the change. Otherwise, you're really just testing the last change that you saved. So you could change it 50 times and it doesn't look like it changed at all unless you click change settings. So make sure you do that. And let's try it and try it and try it. And there we go. We're starting to get closer to the location that we want. And really all that's involved with this is adjusting the font size and then moving the box with the padding around exactly the way you want it. And that's really all there is to it. Once you have it set so it looks exactly how you want it, you can easily add it into a scene. Uh, let's show you OBS Studio first. You click the plus, you go to browser source, you name it, in this case, member. Then I just need the URL. So I pop back over 
into Streamlabs website and I go up and I make sure only members is checked and I click copy. Then I'm going to paste that right up in here in the top. Now I wanna click control audio with OBS so that I can hear the audio that I created for the widget as well. Then I'm going to resize it and I'm gonna flip over to OBS Studio, click test member and when I come back into my OBS, there it is, working just like it's supposed to, with text looking just like it's supposed to. If I wanted to add this into Streamlabs OBS, it's pretty simple. I just click that plus button. I can go to the alert box, type in members, add sources, then I'm going to uncheck everything on the left-hand side, so only members is selected. Then I'm going to click done. Then you see it added here. I'm just going to resize it exactly how I want. And when I click test widget, bingo, there it is. It's that easy to create your own custom animated widget. Who knew it was that easy? If you wanna learn more about how to add Streamlabs widgets to your streams, check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.